Welcome back to Peter Pan Lore and Peter Pan Facts on YouTube <laughs> with me, your Peter Pan hobbyist and enthusiast, using my Peter Pan hobbyist enthusiast brain and knowledge to bring you fun facts, lore and trivia, talk about the world of the Neverland and the story of Peter Pan. And today, yep, yep, the people just down the street are chopping trees. Cool. Ah, living in the countryside. <laughs> So today is my first video in my 120 years of Peter Pan costuming history series that I'm going to be doing on this channel over the course of the rest of the year. The final video in this series will come out on December the 27th, and that is because December the 27th in 1904 is the first day that this play was ever premiered to the public in the Duke of York's Theatre in London. So in 120 years time, that will be December 27th, 2024. So I decided this would be a really good year to look at the costuming history, partly because of my absolute love of this source material and the stage play in particular, and also because, as you might know from my other channel, I am a cosplayer. I have made many different costumes before. I have now made several Peter Pan costumes, two of which are based on original designs from various different things, and I'll be using those in my videos as we go forwards. Speaking of costumes, you may have noticed this new one, which is behind me over here. Now this is where we are going to start. This video today is starting with the very first Peter Pan costume, and it is from the 1904 original design design for Peter's costume for the stage play. So in the play, the only real descriptions we get of Peter's outfit is that, in so far as he is dressed at all, it is in autumn leaves and cobwebs. One of my favourite things about Peter and J.M. Barry's writing about Peter is that we get to imagine him however we want, that's completely left up to us, and that to me is pretty magical. So let's talk about the original design for the stage costume, and no, this is not how the stage costume ended up looking. We're going to start with Peter's cap in this. So he has a cap that's made of leaves. Fun story, I didn't have to make this, I already owned this and I made it for a completely irrelevant to Peter Pan cosplay. It was to do with Molly Mork from Critical Role, it, it was a whole thing and I have kept it and I am so glad that I did because it has become part of my Peter Pan costumes ever since. So the original stage costume for Peter, which I didn't know at the time of making this, had him in a cap full of leaves. It's described like this, a cap of feathers, orange, yellow and red, and brightest blue, a kingfisher or a jay, a few black and some white and pale colours. So let's have a look at it then, this is my version of Peter's hat, you can see I have added cobwebs to mine, you've got some vines going through, different coloured feathers and leaves, just to go cosplay for a second here, I made mine, if you ever want to recreate one and make it yourself, I made it out of a stretchy swim cap, so the base of this is a stretchy waterproof swim cap, and you put it on like this, and you can wear it behind your ears, you can have hair in front of it like this, I usually wear a wig with mine, there you go, and it just sits on the back of your head. I might wear this for the rest of the video because it's quite cool. Uh, so you can see all the different feathers in it. I really, really love this as a part of Peter's design. I think it really harkens into his natural living with nature on the Neverland, his otherness, his fey qualities as well. And part of this is, yes, him living with nature and on the Neverland with the fairies and things like that, but also there's just his complete otherness to society. Societally, we would expect people to wear clothes, but Peter is not always wearing clothes. Sometimes he wears shirts and things, things that Wendy has made for the Lost Boys, and at one point he puts on one of Captain Hook's coats, but he himself, in his natural state that he wishes to be in, the state that you first meet him in, is leaves, cobwebs, the juices that ooze out of trees. And so I think this being literally a part of his hair, even if it is a hat, it really goes to show a lot of that, so. As a sort of symbolic metaphor, I really enjoy that for Peter's character. But what do you think? A lot of you may have been used to seeing him in the sort of pointed Robin Hood-esque green hat that Disney have put him in, it's been in many different productions over the years. Over the rest of these videos for 120 years of costuming, I will show you various different hats that Peter has worn over the years. Yes, some of them are green, and some of them even have the big red feather in them, so you can see where Disney got that inspiration from. However, this one is definitely one of my favourites. It's very natural, it's very busy, I like a lot of chaos in my costumes, lots of different bits and pieces to look at, and this just being a big part of Peter, I really enjoy. But let me know what you think from the top down <laughs> in the comments down below. And now let's move on to the rest of the costume. Fun fact as we move on to talking about the rest of this costume, Peter is designed in this as having a cartridge belt. And this is because, and it might surprise you to know this, especially if you've just been watching the Disney one where he only has a tiny little dagger, yet canonically Peter Pan can use and has at some points owned, uh, I'm not sure if I can say this word on the internet, uh, G-U-N-S. There you go. Uh, he has a few of them. In fact, in this picture, he has at least two in his belt. He uses them for hunting at certain points. And seeing as he has a lot of interactions with the pirates and they certainly have them and use them, I definitely can see where he will have got them from. I think he stole all of them. So yeah, through theft and things like that, Peter Pan 
has G-U-N-S, and in this costume has a cartridge belt because of it. It says in this description that the costume should be made of a very thin leather. Now I will hold my hands up here and say that my costume replica is not made of a very thin leather. This is partly because I dislike working with leather, and also because I couldn't find a fake leatherish looking thing that was in the right colour. So I have instead picked this fabric, which is more stretchy and cottony, and actually is easier to move in. So forgive me for that one, it's not a complete replica, it is a based on and inspired by this costume design costume. There is also a design for another hat that Peter wears. I didn't have time to make this one myself and seeing as I much prefer the leafy one, I've gone with this one. However, there is another one. I'll show you a picture on the screen now. This hat is described as being the color of grass. The feathers are stuck through a band of dried grass and it should be of uneven lengths and of different orange, red, yellow, white, and black colors. I really enjoy this. For some reason, it makes me think of gnomes and people going fishing. It's definitely a sort of fishery hat. I really enjoy that. I can imagine Peter sitting by a river, by a stream, uh, in the home under the ground even, fishing through the floor, that kind of thing. I definitely imagine him sitting in this kind of hat. Keeps the sun off as well, all these different things. And I definitely can see this working for a character like Peter. I don't think he's a fan of orderly, everything being exactly the same, absolutely not. He dislikes when people are in any way dressed like him. So him having all these different feathers that he's potentially found at different points and just stuck into his hat because he thought they looked cool. Yeah, I can imagine, absolutely love that. Not everything being exactly the same things being just completely all over the place. Love the higgledy piggledy nature of that. Moving on to the costume itself then. So this costume is essentially a short tunic, it's got some sleeves and it's got some trousers. This is a very common thing for Peter Pan costumes. I really enjoy that they all most of the time tend to harken back to this idea of having a tunic as a base and then you've got different decorative things, different patterns, different colours, leaves on some of them. You've got various different types of sleeves, some of them have lace up, some of them have complicated bits and pieces. You've got leggings and then and you've got either boots, shoes, that kind of thing. I love the way they're all different. We'll go into that over the rest of the videos, but just so that you guys are aware, yeah, most of them, most of them tend to have this base pattern of a tunic and some sort of leggings. That's where they all seem to start. In William Nicholson's design for this version of the costume, they talk about having a piece of sort of shot silk, which is in the middle of the costume and under lights, it will look different colors. Now, again, I didn't have the exact correct fabric to make this look exactly like that, nor do I have stage lighting to show it. So instead I've done it with a beautiful piece of sort of green that I already have. So we've got the mustardy, dark, yellowy brown, and then we've got the green in the middle. One of the other exciting things I really love about this costume, and one of the last things that's written on this description of the design by William Nicholson, is the sash that Peter is wearing. It's described that the sash might be arranged so as to become almost like a bird's tail when you're looking at it from the side or from the back. And this all harkens back to the little white bird, which is the first time we ever see Peter Pan. And he is talked about very briefly in this story, which is the little white bird. You can find just the sections with Peter Pan in it called Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. In this story, we learn how all children were once birds and they can remember they were birds for a short amount of time before they completely become human. Peter, when he was just one week old, he remembered that he used to be a bird and he then believed he was a bird again so he could fly. He flew to Kensington Gardens and there he realized that he wasn't a bird anymore but he also wasn't human and didn't want to go back to being a human and he becomes the betwixt and between that's what he's called by the wise old solomon bird and he becomes well the peter pan that we know and know him as today while he is in kensington gardens he spends a long time living on the bird island and there he learns how to be a bird he learns the ways of the birds he learns how to be carefree he learns how to build really good nests and he whittles himself some pan pipes so that he can play sounds and music like the birds can sing there are so many lovely connections back to Peter Pan's roots with birds. Even if you haven't read The Little White Bird, you can pick them out through the play and the novel as well. And one of them is the bird tail. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate this to you in a minute by putting the costume on, but for now, I will show you by holding it up. This is the bird tail. As you can see, loads of different colors, poofiness at the back, and when you turn, it does look a bit like a bird tail and it will wiggle as you do so. I'm gonna to talk to you now about some of my other favorite parts of this original costume design. None of these are mentioned on the page that we get with the notes on it from the original costume design. They are just things that are there that I have put into this version of the costume and I really enjoyed. So first of all, I want to talk about this. They have got little tassels of all different colors and this is also true on the bottom of the tunic as well. This makes me really happy, I don't know why. They're just so sweet and so cute. And as you can see in the picture, which I hopefully have put up over here, you can see the little darts of color. Now, 
I chose to turn them into tassels because I feel like it goes with the sort of natural bird-like costume bits. I feel like having them sticking out and being more tassely, it goes in with the feathers and things like this. However, they could also be read as just little tabs of colour, little, you know, swatches, that kind of thing. Also on the back, we have the fringing. Now I didn't have enough fabric to make it quite as long as theirs. It would normally come down to about here in that costume design. However, I really love it and I've left it completely loose. None of this is attached at all, so it can just dangle and float about while you're prancing around wearing this costume. Ultimately, I am a little bit sad that this very tastely colourful costume didn't get worn on the stage, but the direction that they went in instead of this is absolutely beautiful. And I will talk more about this in the later videos as we go on ahead. I have recreated one of those costumes already and I absolutely love it. So seeing where the inspiration may have started and then where we moved on to, I'm definitely happy. So while this was incredibly fun to make and I will probably wear it when I'm doing some of my TikTok Peter Pan facts videos, I am absolutely glad that this didn't end up becoming the official design that Peter went with for many, many years on the stage. I think the one that we ended up with was easy even better in so many ways. Speaking of original stage costume designs for Peter Pan that never quite got to exist, there's another one I'd like to show you. This one's also from 1904. This one is by Henry J. Ford, and it was also designed for Nina, and it is this one. Now you may recognize that costume because I used it as some of my inspiration when I was making leggings for my Finding Neverland Peter Pan costume. So I would quite like to recreate that entire costume at some point, however, I have made a design on the leggings. So as you can see, they're sort of greeny in my version and they have different, well, I bleach painted these on, a sort of leafy scaly design, which makes Peter look very other and very different. One of the things I really love about this costume is a sort of leafy hood. Got a sort of choppy front and then it comes down over the ears, comes down into a hood, and then it looks like it's its own mantle. I also really, really love the cobwebs that go up the sleeves here. This is a design feature which is in many costumes, and I'll be talking about this in other videos as we go through the history of Peter Pan. I also really enjoy just how much movement this costume gives to Peter's actor. So you can see the tunic hangs really low, sort of almost, I feel like it's a sort of Romany Greek style all the way down past his armpits, meaning that Peter can jump around and have plenty of movement. And also in practical terms, the stage harness has plenty of space to sit underneath the costume without getting stuck in the armpits. So Peter has a big wide range of movement to swirl and whirl the cobwebby sleeves. The tunic itself I also really like. It's got lots of texture, it's very rugged, I like that. Again, the belt looks like it could be stitched in or it could just be hanging there. Love the leafy trousers, they are very, very cool. And the shoes as well. I love this design for the shoes. It looks a little bit like some of the shoes that Disney has given its performers over the years. It's simple, the shape is easy, it reads from the audience, oh look, it's sort of leafy shoes, that kind of thing. And it's not so busy that you can't make out all the details, but it's just picking individual things to make it look busy and chaotic, but not so much so that you never can catch any of the details. Yeah, I am definitely going to recreate this costume at some point when I have the time. Absolutely, it's happening. Another cool little snippet from 1904 that I'd like to draw your attention to is this original design for the poster advertising Peter Pan at the Duke of York's theatre. This design was by Charles Bushell and it shows Peter in a very different costume. This outfit, I think, is inspired more by the Henry J. Ford costume design. You can see it through the little lines and where the tunic is hanging. It definitely feels like that to me. It's also done in green, as opposed to the yellows, the browns, the oranges, and the reds, which we see Peter in classically for several years from Nina through Gene Forbes Robertson and many other productions, even including Finding Neverland the movie. He does, however, have the big sweeping red cape, which is definitely one of Peter's signature colors, along with green. Now green over the years has been added and become one of his signature colors. However, originally he will have been seen in the reds and oranges, browns and yellows, that kind of thing. So having both of these colors in one of these original poster designs, looking at it many years later, actually feels quite satisfying to know that these two colors, particularly the green, has sat with Peter and the red does come back. We will talk about this over the course of the year where I take you through many of the other costumes. Red and autumnal colors are starting to make a comeback in Peter Pan costumes and this I really love to see, but more on that in later videos. But now to finish this video, I am going to throw on this Peter Pan costume and show you what the whole thing looks like. Bear with me for a second. Oh, 
All right, so that was part one of the 120 years of Peter Pan costume series, which I'm going to be doing here on my YouTube channel. It will be finishing right at the end of December, and I'll be bringing you another video at the end of every single month, taking you through a portion of the Peter Pan history. It's not going to be one costume per video, quite like this one. Some of them I will have made. I am going to try to have made a costume for every single video. Some of them I've already made, some of them I'm going to make a few extra bits of. What I'm going to try to do instead is do one aesthetic per video, or one block of time per video and I'll be talking about how the different costumes correlate to other ones, where the inspirations might have come from, what things have stayed over the years, what things have been changed and edited and I'm going to look back on all the older costumes to see what influence they had later down the road. So next up we're going to be talking about the first stage costume of Peter Pan worn by Nina and Jean Forbes Robertson and people like that. I have already made a version of this over on my Morcus Noise cosplay account, I will link the video down below and up here if I can do so if you'd like to go and watch the quite emotional behind the scenes of me making that very important costume for me, that is over on my cosplay account. So just to give you a few spoilers then for the 120 years series, they're coming out at the end of each month, this one for February. The second one, number two, is going to be coming out at the very end of March. This is going to be talking about Nina and her costume and the various other costumes that were similar to that one. Video number three is going to come out at the very end of April and this is going to be looking at the Maud Adams era of Peter Pan and what those costumes were like. And that is all I'm going to tell you for now, you'll have to wait for more spoilers spoilers on that one which I will give you in March and April as those other videos are coming out. But if you are interested in spoilers and you want to support the chaos of this channel and see some things before they happen, you can head on over to the Peter Pan Law Patreon page. I'll link it down below. There is a brand new Peter Pan Law Patreon page. I am not expecting very much to come of this, but if anyone does want to support me in this absolute chaos, if you've loved my TikToks, that kind of thing, then jump over there and pop in some monthly support. That way I will start posting more behind the scenes things and you guys can see what's coming before it actually gets posted to TikTok and to Patreon. I'm also probably going to do some costume reveals over there quite early and I'm planning to do some votes as well so you guys can vote on different things you'd like me to talk about on this YouTube channel while I'm not doing my 120 years of Peter Pan at the end of every month. But of course absolutely no pressure to do so if you want to support the channel but you cannot do it monetarily that is absolutely fine just make sure you're following me on my TikTok and my YouTube and you share and like all my videos and you comment away that kind of thing. All right so before I leave you for today let me know what do you think of the first stage costume designs for the Peter Pan costume. What was your favourite one over the years? I promise I will probably be talking about it in a later video. So let me know your favourite costumes, maybe your least favourite costumes as well in the comments down below. And also, is there anything you would like me to talk about that I maybe have talked about in brief over on the TikTok page that you'd like me to do a big sort of lore deep dive into? Chuck those ideas in the comments down below as well. And also, I am still reading through the adaptations you guys have asked me to. Over on TikTok, you guys voted, you've given me a list of adaptations. I found several of them, I am slowly working my way through them. Work is a little bit crazy right now, so I haven't had as much time to read them as I wanted, but those videos on the adaptations are still coming. I'm probably going to do a combined first video where I look at lost boy and alias hook but i haven't quite finished reading alias hook yet i'm really sorry so keep your eyes out for that one and let me know if anything else you'd like me to talk about in the comments down below all right have a amazing rest of your day rest of your week whenever you're watching this video have a wonderful magical time and don't forget to hydrate all right thank you all and goodbye <laughs>